few movies of our time have won such quick success or lasted so long in the minds of those who saw it as the original of tonight's offering, Mr. Frank Capra's notable production for Columbia Pictures Corporation, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. And now, our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, starring Gertrude Lawrence and Orson Welles. There's a sign, cop. This ought to be Mandrake Falls. Hey, look, it rhymes. What rhyme? The sign. It's a poem. Welcome to Mandrake Falls, where the scenery enthralls, where no evil air befalls. Welcome to Mandrake Falls. What do you think? I think it's Mandrake Falls. Does uh, Mr. Deeds live here? Mr. Longfellow Deeds? Yes, indeed. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Are you related to Mr. Deeds? No, I'm his housekeeper. I see. Perhaps you can tell us something about him. What does he do for a living? He owns the tower works here, but that isn't where he makes his money. He makes most of it out of his poetry. His poetry? You mean he wrote all the signs we've seen around this town? Every one of them. Longfellow is famous around here. He makes a lot of money writing things on postcards. You know, Christmas, Easter, birthdays. Here's one they paid him $25 for. When you've nowhere to turn and you're filled with doubt, don't stand midstream hesitating, for you, you know, know that, that your, your mother's, mother's heart, heart cries out. out. I'm, I'm waiting, waiting, my boy, I'm waiting. waiting. Isn't that beautiful? The very word I was searching for, beautiful. Well, I'll tell him you're here. Oh, old man Semple must have been goofy to leave all his money to this yokel. How much do you figure the estate will amount to after the taxes are deducted? About 20 million. Well, yeah, better be careful how you spring it on him. He's liable to keel over from the shot. How do you do, gentlemen? Oh, are uh, you Longfellow Deeds? Yes. My name is John Cedar. You may have heard of my law firm in New York, Cedar, Cedar, Buddington, and Cedar. I'd like to meet Buddington. And this is Mr. Cornelius Cobb. Uh, won't you sit down, He please, handles gentlemen. our public relations. Ouch! What's this, Cactus? It's a new mouthpiece for my tube. I keep losing him all the time. By the way, you gentlemen want to stay for lunch? Uh, no, no. Uh, we are here to ask you a few questions, Mr. Deeds. I suggest you sit down, too, Mr. Deeds. You right. may feel faint in a minute or two. Mr. Deeds, are you the son of Joseph and Mary Deeds? Yes. Are your parents alive? No. I wonder if you'd be good enough to tell me exactly how they met their death. Well, my mother and father, uh froze to death in a storm. They just got through delivering Sarah Perkins' baby in Pine Valley. That checks all right. Very Mr. cold Mr. winter. Mr. D, does the name of Martin W. Semple mean anything to you? Not much. He was an uncle of mine, although I never saw him. Well, he passed on. Red he hair. was killed in a motor accident in Italy. He was? Oh, that's too bad. If there's anything I can do... Prepare I'm... yourself for a great shot. The shock of a lifetime, Mr. Deeds. I wish it was my lifetime. Mr. Semple left a great fortune when he died, Mr. Deeds. He left it to you, Mr. Deeds. Deducting taxes, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $20 million. You know, you're silly if you don't stay for lunch. Mrs. Meredith made some fresh orange layer cake, and you haven't really eaten fresh orange layer cake until you've tasted Mrs. Uh, Meredith. Uh, perhaps you didn't hear me, than... Mr. Deeds. The whole Semple fortune goes to you. Twenty million. And Twenty million dollars. I wonder why he left all that money to me. I don't need it. I made a mistake about who ought to sit down when this news was told. You see, Mr. Deeds, the farm of Cedar, Cedar, Buddington, and Cedar... Buddington. It's funny, I can't think of a rhyme for Buddington. Well, uh, right now, Mr. Deeds, I think you'd better start packing. What for? You're coming to New York with us. When? Tonight on the six o'clock train. There are a great many important things you've got to take care of right away. You know, I've never been away from Mandrake Falls in my whole life. Uh, but I'd like to see Grant's tomb at that. That's the idea. Come on down to New York and see if you can find a rhyme for it. Cobb. Hey, Cobb, would you look at that sign? Farewell, Longfellow Deeds, the pride of Mandrake Falls. First sign I've seen all day that wasn't poetry. Say, am I going crazy? Why, what is it? Why, that, that tuba player in the band, isn't it? 
Mr. Deed. Yeah, just a minute, uh, Mr. Cedar. Only this is my last chance to play with the band. I kind of felt a little yes, sentimental. Yes, yes, I understand, but we've got to get on the train. Yeah, I suppose, but the more I think of New York, the more worried I get. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Of course, a fortune of your size involves a great responsibility. Yes, but I know, you but... have a great deal of assistance. Just don't worry. I'm not worried about that. No? No, I, I was just wondering where they're going to get another tuba player for the band. Hello, boys. Hello, John. What happened, Peter? What's he like? A child, gentlemen, a mere child. Did you get this? No, Mr. Buddington, I didn't get the power of attorney, but I will. And if you'd stop demanding miracles overnight... It's not that, John. It's just that we can't afford... I know, I know. We can't afford to have the books investigated right now. Seems to me you've said that several thousand times already. But if they ever fall into anybody else's hands... Stop being scared of your own shadow, Jim. It hasn't happened yet, has it? Goodness me, half a million dollars. Where are we going to... Will you please stop? Just relax. Leave everything to me. It was I who got old man Sebel to turn everything over to us, wasn't it? Who got the power of attorney from him? All right, I'll get it again. I hope so. But suppose he stops to talk to somebody. Suppose somebody tells him... Get it. Nobody's going to get near it. I tell you, we've got nothing to worry about. The boy's a fool. Mr. McIntyre? Sit down, Brenda. Did you send for me? I did. Well? Three days have gone by, and what have you brought in on Longfellow Deeds? Nothing. Nothing but flat, dull, boring, routine drivel. I've tried everything, Mr. McIntyre, but there's a watchdog around called Corny Cobb. He's keeping Deeds under lock and key. Corn said Bohunk falls into $20 million, and you can't find out anything about him because he's guarded by... Corny Cobb. The reason you're on this paper, sweetheart, is... With a name like yours and a face like yours... It takes time to think how to get around Corny, but I'll get it. Listen, sweetheart... If you get some stuff on this Longfellow Deeds, personal stuff, I'll give you your own column. Honest? And your picture at the head of it. I'll get it. Keep four columns open on page uh, one tomorrow. That's the way I like to hear you talk. I'll keep the whole front page open. What are you going to do? Well, if you care to break a rule and read your own paper, you'll find the story in the early edition. Ah, then, Mr. Deeds, how does that feel? Comfortable? It feels great. No kidding, Mr. Cedar. All these white marks this tailor's putting on my pants, they really mean something? Oh, yes, yes. You ought to know, but it's the first time I ever had a suit made on purpose. Almost finished, Mr. Deeds. While I think of it, Mr. Deeds, I don't want to press the point, but things are piling up down at the office, and if you'd care to give us your power of attorney... uh, I don't like the cuffs turned over. Do you want, Mr. Deeds? One cuff turned over and one cuff straight. Great. That would look funny, huh? Yes. I uh, I don't think you realize how much petty annoyance a power of attorney would save you. Your uncle never bothered about these trifling business affairs. He traveled most of the time, left everything to us. He enjoyed himself. You should be doing the same thing. By the way, where is all this money? In a bank? Oh, no, no. There's approximately a million and a half in cash. The rest is in stocks, bonds, real estate, other things. The uh, accountants are working on the books now. I'll be ready in several weeks. Sounds complicated. Oh, yes. Yes, that's why I suggested your letting us take care of it. I could have the power of attorney drawn up You mean besides being my lawyer, you want to take care of my investments? Is that it? Yes, you see, that's the kind of extra service a firm like Cedar, Cedar, Buddington, and Cedar is glad to donate. You know, it's a funny thing. I haven't been able to think of a rhyme for Buddington yet. I wish you'd give that matter some thought, Mr. Deed. Hmm? Uh, The matter of the power of attorney. Oh, yes, I will, Mr. Cedar. I'll give it a lot of thought. A fellow was in here yesterday, wanted to handle my affairs for nothing, too. It kind of puzzles me why a lot of people want to do my work for nothing. It isn't natural, so I guess I'll have to think about it some more. Well, you have four or five buttons on the sleeve, Mr. I Cedar. don't know. What about it, Mr. Cedar? Oh, well, I, to tell you the truth, I'm not acquainted myself. You I... see, when an important matter comes up, you're no more good to me than if I didn't have an advisor. I guess I'll have to think the whole thing over. <laughs> From what I understand, gentlemen, he's quite childish. We'll have no difficulty getting him to put up the entire deficit. After all, it's only a matter of $180,000. Oh, I wish he'd come down. It'll only take a few moments. 
We happen to be very fortunate, gentlemen. I have discovered that the young man is sympathetic towards music. He played the tuba in his hometown band. <laughs> oh, here he is now. Oh, hello, Mr. Deeds. Gentlemen of the board, this is Mr. Deeds. Oh, delighted. Oh, How do you do? Now, I know you're a busy man, Mr. Deeds, so we'll proceed to business at once. The first business before this meeting is the election of the chairman of the board. Uh, as a sentimental gesture toward the best friend opera ever had, the late Mr. Semple, I think it only fair that his nephew, Mr. Longfellow Deeds, be made chairman, and I herewith nominate him. Second. All in favor? Aye. Carried. My congratulations, Mr. Deeds. I'm chairman, as easy as that. Oh, Mr. you Deeds. honor us, sir. If you sit nice. here, please, in the president's chair. Thank you, the president's chair. In the order of business calls for the secretary's report. A move we dispense with it. Second. We will dispense with it. The next is the treasurer's report. A move we dispense with it. Second. Quite right, quite right. The next business... Wait a minute. Be... Uh, what does the chairman do? Oh, he uh, presides at meetings. That's what I thought. Well, if you don't mind, I'm kind of interested in the treasurer's report. I'd like to hear it. Uh, really, Mr. Deeds, I assure you that... Unless the treasurer didn't bother to come. Oh, oh yes, Mr. President, I'm here. The treasurer reports a, a deficit of $180,000 for the you company. You mean you lost $180,000? I think I should explain to you, Mr. Deeds, that the opera is not conducted for profit. What is it conducted for? The opera is an artistic institution. We own an opera house, don't we? Yes, And we give do. shows? We provide opera. Well, we charge. I mean, we sell tickets. Of course. It doesn't pay? Well, that would be impossible. Well, the opera never pays. In that case, we must give the wrong kind of shows, I guess. Well... Incidentally, where's the 180000 coming from? Uh, frankly, uh, we were expecting it to come from you, Mr. Deeds. Me? Well, that should be. It's well, your uh, civic duty to keep the opera alive for the people. I don't see the point of keeping opera alive for people who don't seem to want Mr. opera. Mr. Deeds, the opera... No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid you'll have to get it from someplace else. Goodbye until the next meeting, and thank you for making me chairman. <laughs> Buddington. 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 Hey, what's the matter, lady? Nothing. Nothing. I'm all right. You fainted right on my doorstep, my Did front. I? I'm doorstep. sorry. I... Can I help you? No, no, thank you. I'm all right. Really, I am. This is my house. If you want to come inside here, I'd rest. I'd be No, very... no, no. I'll be all right. Say, what's happened? Well, I guess I walk too much. Been looking for a job all day. Found one, too. I start tomorrow. Thanks for helping me up. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, hey. Uh, sorry, I guess, guess I'm weaker than I thought. Have you had dinner? Dinner? Why, isn't that funny? I, I forgot to eat. Forgot? Yeah, I do that lots of times. I just get to thinking about you're something. You're not fooling me. You haven't got any money, have you? Frankly, no. Well, then, you're going to eat with me. Maybe you can help me. I don't know where to go. I couldn't let you pay I'd for I'd like my... one of those places where all the famous people go. I'd, I'd like to see some of them. Well, according to the colonists, they mostly eat at La Malacca. La Malacca? You, you, you know where that is? Mm-hmm. It's on 52nd Street. 52nd Street. <laughs> Taxi! The La Malacca it is. You don't know how good this food tastes. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Dean. Oh, I wish you'd let me help you some, Miss Dawson. Oh, please. I asked you not to talk Sorry. about it. Sorry. You're the first person I've met in New York who didn't want something. Waiter! Oh, leave us in. Anybody come in yet, waiter? Anybody? Uh, why? Oh, uh, nobody important. You'll be sure and point them out, won't you? Oh, you know, please, Mr. I'm a writer. Indeed, Mr. I'm a writer myself. You know, I write poetry. Would you like to hear one of my poems? I certainly would. Here's one. I. A lot of people like this poem, huh? When you've nowhere to turn and you're filled with doubt, don't stand midstream hesitating, for you know that your mother's heart cries out, I'm waiting, my boy, I'm waiting. For you know that your mother's heart cries out, I'm waiting, my boy, I'm waiting. Brenda, is that really true? Cross my heart. Let's tell your story. The season's most intriguing debut was made last night on the chic east side by one Mr. Longfellow Deeds, the multimillionaire postcard poet for Mandrake Falls. You heard me, Mandrake Falls. After wrecking the routine of the stork club by stubbornly refusing to surrender his hat, coat, and tuba at the check room along about 2 a.m., 
Our hero ruffled the fine feathers of the few remaining patrons in the 21 Club when he and Charles McCarney, famed Hollywood scripter, settled a major poetic controversy on the barroom floor. And before the debris in his wake could be cleared away, the Cinderella Man, New England's latest gift to the gaiety of our town, was back in his barouche and well on his way to Central Park for a breath of fresh air and a brisk swim in the seal pool. Cinderella Man, that's sensational, Brenda, extremely sensational. Is he really that big a sap? Yes, Mac, he's the original, and there are no carbon copies. The story is a work of art. It'll be in all the school books. For a society girl, sweetheart, you sure can write. Thanks. Here's the part I like. As dawn rose over Times Square, Mr. Deeds was glimpsed feeding a bag full of donuts to a horse. When asked why he was doing it, our hero replied, I just wanted to see how many donuts this horse could eat before he asked for a cup of coffee. Ha, 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 When asked why he was doing it, Am I... I supposed to see him again? You certainly are. When can you make it? Mm, tonight, maybe. I'm supposed to phone him at noon on my lunch hour. And in case Cobb starts snooping around, I've moved into Mabel Dawson's apartment. That's the girl I was at school with. I'm a stenographer now, you know. And my name's Mary Dawson. Deeds, get up, it's late. Oh. What the oh. world happened to you last night? Look at this stuff in the papers. What did you do? No, you remember most of it. <laughs> what do they mean calling me Cinderella, man? You've got brains, friend. You'll get along <sighs> fine. Just stop punching people in the nose and feeding donuts to a horse. Say, has Miss Dawson called yet? Miss Dawson? No, no, Miss Dawson. I'll have to phone her and apologize for not taking her home. Give me my pants. They aren't Give here. me my pants. I wrote her phone number down on Listen, my... Listen, Deeds, uh, you have no pants. You came home without them. I did what? Matter of fact, you came home without any clothes on at all. You were in your... George. That's silly. You know I couldn't walk around the streets without any clothes. I'd be arrested. That's what the two policemen said. What two policemen? The ones that brought you home. They said you and another man kept walking up and down the street shouting, Back to nature. Clothes are a blight on civilization. Back to nature. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. I, I tell you what I do remember, though, about last night. I remember finding a rhyme for Buddington. Oh, yes. Yeah, how's Jesus. this? Bye, baby Buddington. Daddy's gone a-huntington to get a little rabbit skin... To wrap his baby Buddington in. You know, Miss Dawson, it's very nice of you to show me around like this. Well, I enjoy it. The aquarium was swell. You know, if I lived in New York, I'd go to the aquarium every day. I bet you do. Well, not as much as I'd like to. Tell me... Have you got any news? I mean, anything exciting happened lately? Sure, I met you. No, silly. I mean, what did you do about the opera? Oh, the opera. Uh, I had another meeting with the opera. You look awful pretty tonight, you well, know. What did they say? Said I was crazy. Said I wanted to run it like a grocery store. Well, what are they going to do? You always wear your hair back like that. I wish you'd be serious. I am. I think your hair is probably the there, There's Grant's, too. I hope you're not disappointed. Oh, no. It's wonderful. Well, to most people, it's an awful letdown. Depends on what they see. Well, what do you see? I see a small Ohio farm boy becoming a great soldier. I see thousands of marching men. I see General Lee with a broken heart surrendering. I see the beginning of a new nation, like Abraham Lincoln said. I see that little Ohio boy being inaugurated as president. <laughs> Things like that can only happen in a country like America. You sure can say funny things. It's not hard. You just got to remember whenever you look at anything. That, well, and most people are on the level, you know, simple. And then you see that the simple things really count. That's what you think, isn't it? I mean, that most people are on the level and everything. Oh, sure. 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 <laughs> you kindly stop criticizing and make a few constructive suggestions. But, John, you said that... Yes, Mr. yes, I know. A week's gone by and we still haven't got that power of attorney out of Mr. Deeds. Well, it's ridiculous to have to worry about a boy like that. Look at these articles about him. He's carrying on like an idiot. Why, that's just what I was saying to my wife. Yes. I Buddy, did. Tell who cares what you were saying to your wife? Well, all Please. I can say is, unless somebody in this place gets a brilliant idea pretty soon, the firm of Cedar, 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 uh, Buddington and Cedar is in trouble.
seems to me like that's the first time that typewriter's been silent since you met that, uh... What's his name, the Cinderella man? Oh, stop it, Mabel. You know his name. Long Longfellow Long Deeds. I was only quoting you, darling. Well, stop quoting me. What's the matter with you, Brenda? Nothing. I, I'm just nervous, I guess. Say, where did you and the, uh, the Deeds guy go yesterday? To the zoo? No, we just sat in the park and talked. Then a fire engine came along and he hopped it. Quite a clown, isn't he? He wasn't clowning. He's interested in fire engines. He's going to buy one for his hometown. Charming story. Is, the wet, is that the one you've been working on? Yes. Why don't you finish it? I can't write it. I don't know what's the matter with me. I have an unfailing instinct about such things, and I think I can tell you. Mabel, that man is either the dumbest, the stupidest, the most imbecilic idiot in the world, or he's the grandest thing alive. I, I, I can't make him out. Uh-huh. I'm crucifying him. Why? I don't know. You wanted to be a successful newspaper woman, didn't you? Well, you've done it. Last year's glamour girl makes good. Now, then what? Search me, ask the gypsies. We think we're wise and sophisticated, you and I and the people we go about with. I'm beginning to wonder. Maybe we're the ones who are crazy. That's an idea. Here, here's a guy that's wholesome and fresh, and he looks like a freak. You know what he told me yesterday? He said he'd been walking along looking at the tall buildings. He decided they created a lot of grand palaces here, but they forgot to create the nobleman to put in them. He's balmy, is he? I thought so at first. Now I try to laugh at him, and it sticks in my throat. Hello? Wait a minute. It's the paper, McIntyre. He wants to know where is your deed story for today. Tell him to keep his shirt on. Keep your shirt on. He'll get it. That. Mabel Dome. Never a dull moment with the Cinderella man. When Hook and Ladder Company number 16 arrived at the three alarm blaze downtown in the middle of last night, guess who they found had driven them there? That's right, Longfellow D, the postcard poet, who last night added firefighting, ferry piloting, orchestra conducting, and subway switching to his already considerable repertoire. Tonight he attends his own reception for the higher ups in opera circles. It's not expected that oh, Mr. D. Oh, stop it, stop it. I don't want to see anybody. I've got to get this off, and now I'm going to pack. Pack? Yes, I'm leaving town. I'm going... Long Island? Yes, home. I'm quitting. I don't know what good you think it's going to do if you run away. Well, what else can I do? He's bound to find out sometime. I can't keep this up any longer. Well, it's probably the photographers. Tell them I'm not seeing these tonight, and to go away. Okay. Sorry, Dawson here. My name is Longfellow Deeds. Oh. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Longfellow Deeds. Come on in. You're Mabel, her sister, aren't you? Huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's my sister. She's told me a whole lot about you, Mabel. Thank you. She's told me a whole lot about you, too, Longfellow. Hello, Mary. I waited in the park over an hour. I thought maybe you'd forgotten. Well, I didn't think you could get away with your party and everything. Oh, I wouldn't let them stop me from seeing you, Mary. I threw them out. Threw them out? Yeah. You mean bodily? The whole party? Yeah, they got on my nerves, so I threw them out. I guess that'll be in the papers tomorrow. Something else for people to laugh at. No mind, though. I had too much fun doing it. Should we go for a walk? Sure, if you'd like to. I'll just put my hat on. Excuse oh, me. Oh, we're just leaving. I, it ought to be a nice night to go out in the lake in the park, don't you think? Any night's a nice night to go out on the lake in the park. I'm ready. You look beautiful. You know, she looks better every time I see her. Thank you. Well, good night, and uh, don't worry about Mary. I won't keep her out late. Oh, uh, uh all right. Good night. You know, I once had an idea I could do something with the money, you know, some good. But I haven't had a chance to figure anything out. I've been so busy here. I guess I think of something when I get home. You're going home? Well, a man ought to know where he belongs. I just don't seem to fit in around here. Mary. Yeah? I was thinking I... Wish you could come to Mandrake Falls sometime. The sky is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. You know, within a couple of miles of my house, you can find nearly every kind of tree and bush and flower in the world. I used to spend hours in the woods just hiking around. It was wonderful. I generally 
take a girl with me. A and, girl? Oh, not a real one. I just make one up just to have somebody to talk to. And she was, she was beautiful, too. I always knew that someday I'd meet her. Mary, remember I told you I was writing a poem? Well, brought it with me. It's finished. Here. Thank you. Would you like to read it? It's to you. Yes, of course. Can you see to read it? Yeah. I tramp the earth with hopeless beat, searching in vain for a glimpse of you. Then heaven thrust you at my very feet, a lovely angel, too lovely to woo. My dream has been answered, but my life's just as bleak. I'm handcuffed and speechless in your present divine. For my heart longs to cry out, if it only would speak. I love you, my angel. Be mine. Be mine. You don't have to say anything now, Mary. I, I'll wait to hear from you tomorrow. It's wonderful. You'll hear from me about it tomorrow. Mr. McIntyre. Yes, Brenda. Mr. McIntyre. What's bothering you, Brenda? Mr. McIntyre, last night he proposed to me. Proposed to you? You mean Longfellow Deeds asked you to marry him? Yes. Cinderella man woos mystery girl. Why, sweetheart, that's very terrific. If you print one word of that, I'll blow this whole place up. I'm sorry. I was just carried away with the idea. You set out to make him the screwball of the century, and he makes... Oh, funny, isn't it? Hey, you haven't gone and fallen for that mug. What are you going to do? Tell him the truth. Tell him you're Brenda Bennett, the society columnist who, who made a stooge out of him? Yes. He'll probably kick me down the stairs. I hope he does. Oh, you can disappear, can't you? You, you needn't ever see him again. No, I know I needn't, oh, of but... Of course. You know how you feel about it. If you think it's better to take a chance on telling him... I do. I'm having lunch with him today. I'll tell him then. Well, I'll go and clean out my desk. It was nice here while it lasted, Mr. McIntyre. Well, Mr. Deeds, it's just as I suspected. What is it, Con? You certainly made a sucker out of yourself. Remind me to find a rhyme for sour puss, will you? I finally had sense enough to have you followed last night. Mary Dawson, huh? Mary Dawson, my eye. What about Mary Dawson? That dame took you for a sleigh ride. That New Yorker laughed about for 20 years. She's the slickest double-crossing two-time... What? All right, go ahead and hit me. The first look at this picture in town and country. Brenda Bennett, lovely young daughter of... Mr. and Mrs. Ogden Randolph, Brian Bennett of Broadfields, Westbury, Long Island, last year's most popular debutante who was disappointing this winter's handsome stag line in favor of a reporter's desk on the New York Evening Mail. He's a reporter on the Evening Mail. Every time you opened your kisser, you were giving her another story. That's the name that stuck that moniker on you, too. Cinderella, man. You've been making love to a double dose of cyanide. Shut up. Get me the newspaper on the phone. Hello, evening mail. I want to talk to Miss Bennett. Oh, hello. Uh, Mary, I... Mary, are you the one who's been writing those articles about me? No, that's all right. I just wanted to know for sure... Forget it. I don't bother about lunch. I somehow don't feel very hungry today. You want them to pack your dress clothes too? Now, what in the world would I do with a monkey suit and Mandrake Falls? Okay. I want to go. I want to see him. I want to see that guy. Get out of here. Oh, there you are. Who are you? I just want to see what a man looks like that can spend thousands of dollars on a party when people are starving all around him. Cinderella man, huh? You know how many families you could have fed with the money you paid out to get on the front pages? What do you want? Sure, go ahead and close up the opera. It's not making enough money for you. It'll throw 500 men out of jobs, but what do you care? 20 million isn't enough. I'd like to melt it all and pour it down your throat. Shall I send for the police? No, you don't. Stick them up. What do you want? A chance to feed the wife and kids. 
I'm a farmer. Hmm. A job, that's farmer. what I want. You're a moocher, that's what you are. I wouldn't believe you or anybody else in a stack of Bibles. You're a moocher like the rest of them around you. Sure, everybody's a moocher to you. A hungry dog eating out of a garbage can would be a moocher to you. See what good your money's going to be when you're pushing up daisies. You never thought of that, did you? You never thought about all the people that are starving. They're moochers to you. All those people that are standing in bread lines, not able to feed their wife and kid. I'm sorry. You get all kinds of crazy ideas. Lost my farm. Haven't had enough money to feed the kids. I didn't realize. You can do anything you want with me, mister. Well, sir, first off, I think you should have lunch with me. Then we'll have a little talk about the situation. Not so deep before the opening spring, but in the real news of today is to be found on the home front. It comes from the Park Avenue mansion of Mr. Longfellow Deeds. Now, when a rich man gives away money, it's always a matter of some interest to whom and for what purpose he gives it. But when a young man of 25 announces that he's giving away his entire fortune of $20 million, that is, in every sense of the word, news. And what part of the population is it that is fortunate enough to benefit from this young man's capricious generosity? It's that much-neglected, much-suffering individual, the American farmer. $20 million is being placed in a fund to acquire land, cattle, and equipment to be given on terms accessible to the poorest farmer of this country. And all that this philanthropist requires of each farmer is evidence showing that he understands farming and that at such time in the future as he is able... Please! Now, boys, you'll all be delighted to know that I've completed our arrangements for dealing with our friend, Mr. Longfellow Deeds. Well, I, uh, I found a distant cousin of his who's just signed a charming agreement with Cedar, Cedar, Buddington, and Cedar. So all we have to do now is get this Deeds yokel out of the way. And we are all set to go. Now, there's just one other thing to be taken care of, Buddington. Uh huh? Find out who wrote those articles about deeds in the paper. Yes. And whoever it is, have him subpoenaed right away. Oh. All right, sir, step over to that desk for further instructions. Thank you, Mr. Deeds. Thank you very Next, much. Next, please. Cobb, how many does that make? 819. Is that all? It's going very slow. We need a thousand more. All right, next. Step up the desk, please. How do you do, sir? What's your name? Ernest Byfield, sir. Uh, where, where's your farm, Mr. Byfield? South Carolina, sir. What do you grow? Cotton and tobacco. What about knocking off a leg? I've got to get this business over in the hurry. I want to get back to Mandrake Falls. What price you get on those trucks, Mr. Oh, Byfield? Come on, you want a kilo. You haven't been out of the house in two weeks. Maybe I'll have a sandwich. Mind waiting a few minutes, please? Oh, sure, sure, sir. If you like a sandwich, I'll give you one, Thanks. too, please. Never mind about me, Cobb. But order lunch for all the applicants. For all of them? Why, there must be 2,000 men out that there. That doesn't make them any less hungry. Okay, Santa Claus, 2,000 lunches. Hey, him over there. Sit down. What's going on here? What out of the way. You long for the deed. Yes. Share yourself. We got a warrant to take you into custody. What do you What do you mean, in custody? A warrant for your arrest. You'll have to come with us. What's up? What is it? I don't know nothing, buddy. All I know is the sheriff give me an insanity warrant to execute you're supposed to come with us to the county hospital until the hearing. Insanity? Who says he's insane? You tell him what it says, Charlie. Well, a complaint of his relative, the late Martin Central. The charges are that Mr. Deeds is insane, incapable of handling the estate. Well, wait a minute. We want to get a lawyer. I'll call Cedar. Call Cedar? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Deeds, I am from Mr. Cedar's office. He represents the complainant. He what? Mr. Cedar's the one that lodged the complaint against you. Your own lawyer. That's great. That makes everything complete. Dixie! Each trial opens Dixie! 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 Insanity hearing begins today. Farmers rouse. Please, the record is deed hearing begins. Longfellow deed hearing begins today. Cedar just sent for me. He wants to make a settlement. What do you say? I'm not interested. What are you going to do? Just sit back and let them railroad you? There's pretty a frame of us ever hit this town. If you don't let me get your lawyer... Oh, no, don't bother. Oh, you can't walk into that hearing without being ready to protect yourself in the clinches. Cedar's too smart. That crook with a bunch of trained witnesses... Oh, let me my... alone. Okay, pal, okay. But I hope you change your mind. All right, officer, open up. Along, Mr. Cobb. Goodbye. 
Mr. Cobb. Oh, go away. I've been all over town talking to everybody. Haven't you done enough damage already? Now, listen, I've got my editor all lined up. The paper's back of him. I can get him the best lawyer there is. You're wasting your time. He doesn't want a lawyer. But I've got Sam Lieberwood. He's so low, he doesn't want any help from anybody. Listen you, to me, will you? You can take a bow for that. The swell of guys ever hit this town and you crucified them. Just for a couple of stinking headlines. But there must be something I can do. You've done plenty now. Stay out of his way. Okay. before me a series of articles written by a newspaper woman who was an eyewitness to Mr. Deed's peculiar behavior since his arrival in New York. These articles, Your Honor, do not paint the picture of a man in whom the disposition of $20 million can safely be entrusted. Our institutions are filled with demented who are forever giving away the Empire State Building. <laughs> we present our first witness, Miss Brenda Bennett. Miss Bennett, please. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me, God. I do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me, God. All right, be seated. <clears throat> Miss Bennett, are you employed by the evening mail? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Will you please answer the question? This whole hearing is ridiculous. Please. That man is no more insane than you are. Oh, up. It's a frame-up. They're trying to railroad this man for the money they can get out of it. Young right. lady, you are here to testify. Please confine yourself to answering the questions. Proceed, Mr. Cedar. Are you employed by the evening mail, Miss Bennett? No. You are under oath, Miss Bennett. I ask you again, are you employed by the evening mail? No, I resigned last week. Prior to that time, however, you were employed by the evening mail. Yes, I... You were given an assignment to follow the activities of Mr. Longfellow Deed? Yes, but... Did you subsequently write a series of articles about him? Yes, You I... were present when the episodes you have reported took place? Yes. Are they true? Well, I... I asked you a question, Miss Bennett. Are they true? Answer yes or no. No. But they did take place. They're colored, I tell you, just to make him look... But you saw them happen. Yes, I did. That's all. It isn't all. I'd like to explain. That's all, Miss Bennett. Come on, Miss. Come on. Your Honor, what kind of a hearing is this? He's not defending himself. Somebody's got to do it. Miss Bennett, please. I've got a right to be heard. I'm willing to listen to anything anybody has to say. Must be done in an orderly fashion. When you learn to show some respect for the court, you can return. Till then, you better go back to your seat and calm down. (coughs) Now... Mr. Deeds, do you wish to say anything about the articles that have been handed to me, written by Miss Bennett for the evening mail? No. All right. Proceed, Mr. Cedar. Your Honor, I should like to ask Dr. Herman Mankiewicz if he'll be good enough to give the court his opinion. Dr. Mankiewicz, you know, is the eminent Romanian psychiatrist. Probably the greatest... Yes, all right, uh, Dr. Mankiewicz. The case of Mr. Longfellow Deeds, in my carefully considered opinion... Would you say, Dr. Mankiewicz, that Mr. Deeds is insane? The symptoms are obvious. Instances of this higher uh, uh, Dr. Mankiewicz... Please. Instances of this higher elation are his playing of the tuba, writing childish poems, and chasing fire engines. Oh, yes, there's no doubt he is an obvious case of manic depressive. Meaning, Dr. Mankiewicz, in simple language, that this man is insane. Dr. Mankiewicz? Uh, Dr. Mankiewicz. Yes. Very positively insane. Order, please. Order in the court. Quiet, please. Cedar, your next witness. Your Honor. I have two witnesses here from Mandrake Falls, Mr. Deed's own hometown, who will testify to his strange conduct throughout his lifetime, proving that his derangement is neither a recent nor a temporary one. Nor is it... Yes, yes, let's get on with it, please. Uh, Uh, Will the Mrs. Faulkner take the stand, please? Miss Faulkner and Miss Faulkner. (laughs) What is your name? Jane Faulkner. This is my sister, Amy. Yes, Amy. Do you know the defendant, Longfellow Deeds? Oh, yes, yes. Of course we know him. How long have you known him? Since he was born. Yes. Elsie Taggart was the midwife. 
He was a seven-month baby. Uh, <clears throat> that's fine, thank you. Do you see him very often? Most every day. Sometimes twice. Must we have the echo? Ah, uh, Miss Jane, you can answer for both. Now tell me, what does everybody back home think of Longfellow D? They think he's pixelated. Oh, yes, pixelated. He's what? Pixelated. Well, that's a somewhat unusual word, Miss Jane. Can you tell the court just what it means? Ah, uh, perhaps I can explain, Your Honor. Pixelated is an old New England word. It is derived from the word pixies, meaning elves or the little people. They would say the pixies have got him, as we would say a man is bombed. I see. Um, why does everyone think Mr. Deeds uh, pixelated? Does he do peculiar things, Miss Jane? He, he walks in the rain without his hat and talks to himself. Sometimes he whistles. And recently he gave Chuck Dillon a something. Black as I. Why? For no reason, I guess. We always run into the house when we see him coming. Never can tell what he's going to do. He sure is pixelated. Oh, yes, he's pixelated all right. Thank you, ladies. That will be all. <laughs> order, please. Quiet in the court. Order. Quiet. Mr. Deeds, <clears throat> are you still unwilling to speak in your own defense? You have nothing to say in this court? Nothing. We must have quiet in the court. Mr. Deeds, in view of the extensive testimony and after very carefully considering all the evidence available, I think it advisable for your own safety that you be sent to a state hospital. You need medical attention. No, no, wait a minute. You can't do it. You've got to make him talk, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Bennett, please. You said I could speak. You said that you would listen to anything I had to say if I was rational. Well, I am rational. I'll take the witness chair. But he must be made to defend himself. Your Honor, what she is saying has no bearing on this Mr. case. Mr. Cedar, please let her speak. I know why he won't defend himself. That has a bearing on the case. He's been hurt. He's been hurt by everybody he's met since he came to this town. He's been the victim of every conniving crook in New York. So why should he keep, why should he keep quiet? Everything he said has been twisted around to sound imbecile. And he can thank me for it. I handed the town a great laugh. This is a fitting climax for my sense of humor. Your Honor, this is preposterous. Certainly I wrote those articles. I was going to get a byline in my picture at the head of a column. But I stopped writing them when I found out that he could never fit in with our distorted viewpoint. Because his was honest and sincere and good. If that man's crazy, Your Honor, the rest of us belong in straight jackets. This is absurd, Your Honor. Absurd! This woman is obviously in love with the defendant. What's that got to do with you? You are in love with him, aren't you? Yes! <laughs> Your Honor, I've got a couple of cents worth I'd like to put in, too. I've been with this man since I'm he Miss came... I'm Miss Bennett, city editor, and I can verify everything she said. It was my order fault. The court. Order! Order! There'll be no more of these interruptions. In the interest of the defendant, I've tolerated a great deal of informality. If there is one more outburst, I shall have the courtroom cleared. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Deeds. I'd like to get in my two cents worth. Well, of course, of course, Mr. Deeds. Go right ahead, Mr. Deeds. I don't know where to begin. There's been so many things said about me. That was a pretty speech Mr. Cedar made about me at the opening of this hearing. If I were an outsider, I'd be sure the fellow he was talking about was crazy. Guess that's what a good lawyer is supposed to do, make things look like what they're not. Well, of course, Mr. Cedar has a right to think I'm loony. I once considered paying him $100,000 a year for his services. <laughs> about my playing the... Tuba, it seems like a lot of fuss has been made about that. Of course, I don't see any harm in it, uh, in playing the tuba. I, I play the tuba whenever I want to concentrate. That may sound funny, but most everybody does something silly when they're thinking. For instance, Judge, you're an O-filler. I'm a what? An O-filler. You fill in all the spaces in the O's with your pencil. I've been watching well, you. I, uh, now, that may make you look a little crazy, Your Honor, just sitting around filling in O's, but I don't see anything wrong in it because that helps you think. And Other people are doodlers. Doodlers? Th that's the name we have back home for people who make designs on paper while they're thinking. Most everybody is a doodler. Did you ever see a scratch pad in a telephone booth? Dr. Menkowitz here could probably think up a long name for it because he doodles all the time. 
And, well, I play the tuba. <laughs> Atta boy, Dee! Silence. Now, uh, about my going around and hitting people. I, I, I hit, hit people, all right. You would have too, Judge, if they deliberately made fun of you. It said in one of those articles that I chased after a fire engine. Well, who doesn't chase after? And, and it's to throwing those society people out of my house. Well, I threw them out because I didn't want the party in the first place. Your Honor, Your Honor, this is becoming a farce. I suggest that Mr. Deeds dispense with his side remarks and explain a few facts. For example, his wandering around the city streets at night in his underwear, feeding donuts to a horse. Well, Mr. Deeds? Uh, yeah, they... Yes, Your Honor, they... Those things look kind of bad, don't they? But Judge, I don't remember them. They probably happened all right, because I, I don't think a policeman would lie about a thing like that, but... I was drunk, Your Honor. It was the first time I was ever drunk in my life. Probably happened to you, Judge, I mean, when you were younger, of course. And about the Faulkner sisters, that's kind of funny. Uh, I mean, about Mr. Cedar going all the way to Mandrake Falls to bring him here. Do you mind if I talk to them, Judge? No, not at all, Mr. Faulkner. Uh, Jane. Jane, who owns the house you live in? Why, you do, young fellow. You. You own it. Do you pay any rent? No, we don't pay any bills. Good heavens, no. We never pay rent. Are you happy there? Yes, yes, indeed. Now, a little while ago, you said I was pixelated. Do you still think so? Oh, yes. You've always been pixelated, long fellow. That's fine. Now, tell me something, Jane. Who else in Mandrake Falls is pixelated? Have you figured it out? Uh-huh. Well, who else in Mandrake Falls is pixelated? Why, everybody's pixelated except us. Uh-huh. All except us. <laughs> well, Jane, how about the judge here? He's a nice man, isn't he? Now, do you think he's pixelated? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, Mr. Deeds, you haven't touched on the most important thing. This plan of yours oh, about uh, giving your money away. I was getting to that, Your Honor. The plain fact is I don't want it. I never earned it, and so far it's brought me nothing but hard oh, luck, Your Honor. If I... this man is permitted to carry out his farming plan, Your Honor, repercussions will be felt that will rock the foundations of our entire Mr. government. Mr. Cedar, Mr. Cedar, I don't know what Mr. Cedar is raving about. My idea was very simple. I was, I was going to give each family ten acres, a horse, a cow, and some seed. They worked a farm for three years. It was to be theirs. Now, if that's crazy, maybe I ought to be in an institution, but I don't think it is. What's more, Mr. Cedar doesn't think so either. Right before the hearing started, he offered to call the whole thing off Your if Honor. I made a settlement with him. So, no, you see, objection. Uh, he wouldn't think I was crazy if he got paid off. That's a lie, Your Mr. Honor. Cedar, Mr. Cedar, you will please permit Mr. Deeds to finish. Anything else, Mr. Deeds? No. Uh, yes, there is one more thing I'd like to get off my chest before I finish, Your Honor, please. Go right ahead, Mr. Deeds. Thank you, Judge. It won't take long. Mr. Cedar, will you come up here a minute? Mr. Cedar, you step up here, please. Well, what is it, Deeds? This here, Cedar. A crack on the jaw in this courtroom of law. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Deeds, there's been a great deal of damaging testimony against you. Your behavior, to say the least, has been most strange. But, in my opinion, you're not only sane, but you're the sanest man that ever walked into this courtroom. Case is dismissed. Deeds, you were wonderful. Well, Longfellow, darling, darling, what? I'm so happy, dear. Forgive me. Well, what, sir? Will you forgive me? Hey, Judge, I plead guilty. I am crazy. She's asking me to forgive her. Darling, darling, if you only knew how I felt. Nobody's I... going to forgive anybody. If there's any forgiving to do, you're going to forgive me. If anything had happened to you, I was going to kill myself. Nothing's going to happen to me or to you, only we're going to be together always, if that's all right with you. If it's all right with me. Why, darling. Oh, I, I want to kiss you something terrible, Brenda, only not here. I always figured when you and I got to know we loved each other, somehow it ought to be back home. Back home? Sure, Mandrake Falls. You say it with me. Welcome to Mandrake Falls. Welcome to Mandrake Falls. Where the scenery enthralls. Where the scenery enthralls. Where no evil air befalls. Where no evil air befalls. Welcome to Mandrake Falls. Welcome to Mandrake Falls.